to the channel. Today I wanted to do a little talk on my electrical setup. I've been getting a lot of questions about this as to what I use and how I installed it. So without further ado we're going to get into the video now. So the way I'm going to organise this video is I'm going to start from the battery in the main van itself and then I'm going to work my way back through to the leisure batteries and onwards from those. I'll put timestamps down below if there's something specific you're looking for that you want to know how to do or how I did it. Um, so yeah, let me take you around to the front of the van and we'll go from the auxiliary battery and work our way back to start with. So this is the auxiliary battery located under the driver's seat in a 2014 Mark 8 Transit van. What I've done is I've connected the positive from the batteries in the back to the positive on here and the negative has gone onto the negative side of the battery. That's pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure you all already know that, but I was going to show you this whole install. So, so in my opinion, one of the most important things to install when you're doing an uh, electrical setup for a van is an isolation switch. This one here actually separates my system from the original auxiliary system in the van. The reason I've done that is for two reasons. One, if I ever want to work on the batteries in the back, I know that they're safely isolated from power. And number two, I have a variable split relay in the back and sometimes if the voltage in the battery is above 12.6 it remains open meaning power comes both ways so it's a dual flow one so power comes from the aux battery to the leisure batteries and from the leisure battery to the aux battery so if I'm going to start this van the last thing I want to do is actually draw power from my leisure batteries to start the van with so before I start the van every single time I will isolate these batteries meaning that it's only the auxiliary battery providing power to the automator to get the van started so coming in from the aux battery I have 25 mil cable, a 100 amp fuse, and that runs directly into the VSR. As you can see, the VSR is still open at the moment with the van off. So as I was explaining a second ago, this remains open until the voltage drops below 12.6. So that cable then comes out of the VSR, into a 100 amp fuse, and back in, out of sight. So the VSR I've gone for, it cuts in at 13.3 volts and cuts out at 12.8 volts. Um, not 12.6 like I've been saying, so yeah, 12.8 that one very important point to make about the VSRs if your vehicle has a smart alternator you can't use um, a VSR because it gives out variable um, voltages so it just it just won't work what you'll actually need to use is a DC to DC charger I will do a separate video on that that's not what I've used in here because I don't have a smart alternator so let's continue with what I've done in here we come from the um, auxiliary battery into the VSR out of the VSR fuse both sides directly onto the positive of the furthest battery at the back. So an important thing to note is I've got AGM batteries, I don't have lithium ion batteries. I know the longevity on the lithium ion is better and they're value for money over time, but this is a budget install, so I was keeping costs as low as possible to start with. Now batteries, the batteries I've gone for are off of Alpha batteries and they're called the Platinum Advanced. I'll put a little link below. They're both 100 amp hours each and quite frankly, we've used them off grid in the Outer Hebrides, in Scotland, in Wales, and they've just been fantastic no issue there so it's important with the batteries to make sure they're vented because they come with this little vent hole here to make sure you vent them to the outside um, as you can see I've done both of them I vented that to the outside as well just to prevent any gases from coming in the way I've connected the batteries together is with 35 mil cable and I've gone positive to positive central on both and then the negative from the negative now i've earthed that with 25 mil cable and that's got a really good grounding point in behind here so i know that these batteries are, are very well earthed now it's important to get an even draw off of all batteries so everything that charges batteries i always run into one and everything that draws from batteries i always run out of the other one so in this first battery we've got the vsr which obviously gives us power from the alternator We've got the solar, which then powers the same battery, and then everything that draws from that comes out of this battery. So we've got the 1000 watt Renergy inverter, we've got a distribution board, and we've got our 240 volt system. We move on to the main distribution board. So we've got a 16 mil co cable coming off of our distribution battery. That then runs up out into a 50 amp fuse. And this is our main 
12-way distribution board, which means you can put 12 different appliances onto it. All of the positives run off of the positives and the negatives come down below from the negatives. And this is very well earthed as well. This has its own earthing point. So in order of appliances in this particular setup, I've got the ceiling fan running in number one. Number two is the diesel heater. Number three, we have all the spotlights in the main van itself. Number four is our LED light setup and USB sockets. Number five is our fridge. And number six is the water pump. I forgot about number seven. Number seven is the spotlights in the garage and then negatives all run off of the negative bars. So each one of the switches from down below runs up to this um, switchboard up here. So there's two poles of isolation. This is fused and it's fused down below as well. So these switches here correlate to the wiring at the bottom. So the spotlights are run by a dimmable switch here, on, off. Um, nothing much to note, I've got four in the van, they're 1.5 watts each and that's plenty for this medium wheelbase transit. So the fridge I've gone for, it's not a compressor fridge but that doesn't bother me at all, this has been perfectly adequate. It's a Halfords 25 litre or 24 litre um, cool box fridge but we've never had an issue with it, it keeps everything lovely and cold. I believe it's only 40 watts as well so it doesn't draw too much power and it comes with its own cabling so you can just connect that up to your fuse board in the back. This is the extractor fan. Two lights in the garage area, they're perfectly adequate, they light this up really really well. I need to apologise, the mic's not been connected the whole time so that's back up and running now. Now as always I fitted an isolation switch in between the battery and the main distribution board in case I ever want to do any work on it. So it comes from the distribution battery through to a switch here which is simply just an isolation on off switch in case I need to do any works on the, on the um, electrical on the distribution board or further electrics that side and then that runs into the distribution board uh, via a fuse again probably gone overkill with all the fuses but um, it's better to be safe than sorry on top of the distribution board coming out of the um, what I'm going to call the distribution battery is a thousand watt energy inverter now you can go bigger if you want uh, but I just found that price wise this was good it limits what you bring. I find if you bring, a two, if you have a 2000 or 3000 watt inverter, you tend to just bring a load of things that you don't need, hair dryers and stuff like that. They drain the battery very quickly and they're just unnecessary. We like to keep things minimal. We don't have any air fryers or hair dryers and stuff. So a thousand watts for us is great. We just need to run our laptop, a heated blanket if it gets really cold, and that's pretty much it and just charge our phones and bits. So this Renergy inverter runs via a 25 mil cable from the distribution battery. So 25 mil cable up, 150 amp fuse, up into the inverter itself, and then the negative runs to the negative on the other battery, just to give it an even draw. Out of the top of the inverter, this is the plug for the 240 volt system. We've also got a remote cable here, which goes into the main, main van itself, so I can switch the inverter on and off from in there. I have to apologise about the state of this van. We've been staying in it an awful lot lately and it gets cleaned but it could be getting cleaned before I film so I apologise about that. But what we've got in here is the on off switch for the inverter so I can control that from in here and we've got a 240 outlet plug which has got two sockets and a USB and a USB-C which is really handy. USB-Cs are the future so make sure you install some USB-Cs in the van. Moving on from the inlets on the inverter to the outlets. So I've got a 1 point, no, a 2.5 mil three core flex. It's always important to have flexible cable just because of the movement in the van. You can get away with twin and earth, but if it snaps anywhere due to the movement or the vibrations, you're just in with a lot of problems. So the flex actually has loads and loads of strands in it, whereas the twin and earth only has one. So if a few of the strands break in the flex, it's really not gonna be that big a deal. Whereas the twin and earth, that is it, game over. You're gonna to have to replace the whole cable. And in a van, if they're buried, that could just be a real nightmare. So try and avoid that if you can. So coming out of the top of the inverter, we've got a plug with a 2.5 mil twin and earth. That then runs into this two-way controller, which goes number one for the inverter. So if I wanna power the 240 system off of the inverter, I switch it to number one. Zero, 
is the whole thing is off, doesn't work at all, which is good. It's another way of isolating everything, which as you know, I'm a huge fan of. And number two, that is for your mains hookup. So it's a really, really useful bit of kit, this two-way switch. And I was skeptical of putting it in because it's just another thing to add, another thing to wire, but I'm so glad I did. When we have shore power now, switch it to number two, and I know that the inverter's not gonna be drawing any power, it's not gonna be losing power, and the batteries are completely um, isolated from the power that I'm using on the 240. So this is a really good bit of kit. Now our 240 system, I have gone for a reverse polarity um, consumer unit. Now, the reason for this is sometimes if you're plugging in in Europe, like France or something, they actually reverse the lives and the neutrals. So this will actually indicate if that's happened and will let me know. I would advise you do that. It's not compulsory. And if you are going somewhere where you know that's happened, you can deal with that. Um, but it's just another stress to avoid um, by buying a reverse polarity consumer unit. Uh, I've got two systems running off of this. I've got one which goes to my 240 volt in the van. And then the other fuse goes to this 240 volt socket here. This socket here um, runs this plug, which is my charging. This is only a five amp charger. I had it in the garage anyway. I didn't want to buy another one. If I'm on shore power, I will always plug this in and switch it on because it trickle charges the main batteries. So when I'm running my LEDs and my fridge off of these, which is not an issue, they perfectly they cope with it perfectly well. I'm just reassured that I'm getting a little bit of a trickle charge going in as well as the solar. Um, it's just it's just nice to have. It's not compulsory, but I would I would you know I would recommend having one. It's been it's been good to us. A 10 amp would be even better, but this is all we had. Um, so that then runs into you can isolate that as well here. But that then runs into the positive goes into the battery with everything that charges. So VSR, um, solar, and this go into there, and the negative comes off of the other battery just again to ensure that even flow between the two batteries. And then this powers the inverter. It's not really necessary and it's unplugged up here, but just in case I ever need that, that is there as an option. So I've never used that yet, probably won't ever use it, but it's nice to know I've got it in case something goes wrong and I need to use it. Now we have our energy solar setup, which consists of 200 watts of power on the roof and this MPPT charger. It's a 20 amp charger, so I can only have 200 watts of solar but that's been perfectly adequate for everything we've needed. From the MPPT charger, we've run the positive cable. I think this is 16 mil. This was supplied by Renergy, I believe. And then that runs into the charging side of the batteries. And the negative is this terminal and that runs into the negative on the other battery. So that again is fused. Everything has to be fused. The wiring from the solar panels up the top, positive and negative, you don't have to do this, but I have isolated them, believe it or not. I've run the cables down out up into this little fuse. Um, I picked this up on eBay for about 12 quid, I think. But what that means is um, I can work on the solar if I need to, as every time there's UV rays and sunlight, they will be generating power. So even with all the appliances off, you can't work on the solar unless it's isolated. So this is fantastic for the sake of 12 quid, well worth doing. But yeah, so their fuse runs up into the charger. It gives you a nice little readout if our camera lady will come over. So we've got 13.8 volts of solar um, at the moment from this Renergy unit. I'm not gonna do too much of a talk on the Renergy solar now. Um, I'll do that in a separate video, but they're really good. I've not had an issue, very happy with what I've put in. It comes with a link to a Bluetooth module as well. So yeah, the Bluetooth module here links up to your phone. They've got a very, very easy to use app as well. I'm not promoting them. I'm not sponsored by them. I just genuinely think they're a good product and very, very competitively priced.